from Vienna and I'm going to to give you a, a short insight what we in Austria are planning um, um, for Smart Village and the implementation in the new CAP strategic plan. Yes, for us, um, we, we defined some, some, some principles for the implementation of Smart Village in Austria. So one of the principles, we don't want any new structures, as also Paul already mentioned. We believe we have quite a lot of structures also on the regional um, level. It's not, not really our weakness at that point. We, we think uh, we had a big discussion if, if we should narrow our smart village down to a certain topic, or for example, climate change or, or, or something like that. But then we came to the conclusion it, 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 it's not the best way because uh, it really depends on the local context, what is the, the, the main issue or what is the main problem they want to tackle with, or what, is to be, what should be tackled with smart village. We see smart village also a little bit as a differentiation with leader as an instrument for, for especially for the local level. This means um, smaller than, uh, than a leader region, but still we, 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 we see a, not, a lot of added value in corporations. So, yeah. And of course, always the, the, the question arises, what is smart? We believe smart is um, everything which, which leads to new solutions. Very often these new solutions are, are, are or together with digital technology or, or, or with uh, digitalizations. And also right now with, with, with the corona lockdowns and so on, we, we saw where that we have still weaknesses, especially the educational part and so on. And, and this could also, in my opinion, be a, a push for smart village if we concentrate a little bit on, on, on this. Yes, okay. So next slide. Um, yes, we want to our, we want to introduce or implement smart villages in, in, in principles uh, via three different interventions. The main one is for sure leader, which we will uh, program under Article 71. And other one will be it's called a strengthening of village and town centers. It's basically a, a measure we already have now in the Rural Development Program under Measure 7, the village renewal measure, but with a more focused approach. We will um, probably program it under Article 68 and 71. And the third one is a regional innovation partnerships. This is still very much under, under consideration, very much new. This would also be a very new uh, measure in our sub-statistic plan. Yes, I have to say, of course, uh, that we we are still in the process. We are we are having um, expert groups, and we are trying to come up with good ideas. But nothing, of course, is fixed yet. Yes, let's start with leader. Yes, um, smart uh, the integration of smart village in leader we see as the tool for the local action groups to address um, local challenges or under the local context. We don't want to force smart village on our local action group, so the implementation is not a must, but we are thinking of ways how to give, to, uh, to give incentives, um, especially when we are selecting the local action groups, maybe if we have um, maybe some extra budget, some extra points during the selection period. What we really want from our local action groups, if they say, okay, we want to introduce smart village for a certain topic, we want also a clear commitment in the local development strategy. We also need this because as you know we have a result indicator also to fulfill uh, and, and so on and yes as I said before we will keep it thematically open it can be from climate change up to, to education and so on as agriculture every kind of topic in which is in leader um, possible uh, uh, what is important that smart village in our view is an uh, integrated uh, method so, and it, it's also always and needed a, a holistic view to the to the to the challenges needed. Within leader, we really want uh, to focus smart village for new technologies to solve these challenges. This would also mean uh, fresh content for our leader regions, fresh content also in the local development strategies. And beneficiaries uh, within leader, all possible beneficiaries in leader. So no. Yes, we won't um, exclude anyone here. We don't want to do that. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, as an option for implementation within leader, uh, ideally the, uh, the umbrella uh, umbrella projects um, we see as a good good way to do it. In the umbrella project, what is the purpose of it? It's basically the, the reservation of fund at a very um, um, at the level where you don't know exactly yet uh, the, the the detailed project coming up. So you maybe have a, you have you have the challenge, you have some solution ideas, but you don't know exactly the programs yet. And so you can res reserve funds within the leader budget. It will also give um, more visibility to Smart Village, um, and it's also kind of a marketing tool for it maybe. And it will also give for us will be also useful for us as managing authority. To, to understand where what is going on. And then uh, when, when the, the projects are developed, they can be submitted individually. Yes, but of course, um, uh, Smart Village will not always be uh, so big. Maybe there are also Smart Village projects which are smaller, which are only, uh, which are done within one, uh, with, within one leader project. So this is, this is also not a must for, for, the, for the local action group, but we think this could be a, a very good way to do it. Okay, let's change now then to, to the uh, next intervention we are thinking of. It's called, um, for now, strengthening of village and town centers. Why? Um, so we really saw in our SWOT analysis and our need analysis that um, across whole Austria, uh, the town centers, there are a lot of vacant buildings in it, and this is really is kind of a root cause of many problems. And, and yes, uh, and, and if we can solve these this, 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 this problems, um, we will get more compact, um, compact uh, villages, and this means more 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 life within the village and not not so much outside the village but because what we see now is um, we see uh, this so-called donut effect that in the, in the middle of the village there's nothing going on anymore and around the village we have the grocery stores the shops and so on and this of course uh, also leads to a lot of land use like austria is um, or was european champion in land use and as you know uh, austria is a very narrow has some very narrow parts so land is especially precious it also is bad for the agriculture. It is bad for mobility because you always need a car to get out, to get to the grocery store and so on. It has negative climate effect, has negative effect on your and economic life in the town and so on. So we believe it, it would be smart really to tackle these vacant building problems. And, and it is also resources because we have already the buildings and we just need to re, 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 uh, revitalize these buildings. So. Yes, how, how this could look like. Uh, so we were planning an intervention um, based on, um, uh, on a modular structure. So we're planning basically four models. Um, one model is awareness raising. One mod the other one would be creation of integrated town urban development concepts in a regional context. A third a model would be the promotion of uh, land use or the support of land use manager because you always get the feedback that you always need a person really uh, on the floor who is knocking on the doors and ask the people, okay, why is your building empty? Can we, can we do something and so on? And the fourth model would be more the investment part of it, really uh, to, to overcome construction and constraints and to support this. Yes, um, we, why a modular system? Because not, uh, not every village or not every town is, is at the same stage. Some already have very good concepts but they need investments, uh, they, they need investment support to, to, to bring them into action, let's say. Some really need uh, awareness raising, they need to understand that it makes more sense to go in the towns again and not outside the towns and so on. So this would be a very flexible system. Um, also, also accessible for leader, of course, for the local action groups. So this would be an extra intervention accessible for leader, but also accessible for other, other regional management systems, which probably can or, uh, or also are funded, for example, by the regional funds. Yes. Okay, and the third intervention um, we are thinking of, it's still, um, the details are not clear yet, I have to say, but we got quite good feedback, so I don't want to hold back on it. Um, we had in our SWOT analysis the finding or the need that there is a gap really on the regional um, uh, 
cross-sectoral regional cooperation models, especially for micro and small businesses, and especially now when they are hit quite hard by the lockdowns, by the corona lockdowns, and, and they, they don't have the resources to, to come up with innovations or to, to, they don't really have the resources for all this networking actions and so on. So that's why I want to support um, um, corporations uh, based on a multi-actor approach. So the model is the agricultural innovation partnerships, very similar to that. We would have the, uh, the, the, the micro and small businesses in this corporation. We would have some researchers in this corporation, but also some administration people. And they, they can, yes, they should then build on and also create new projects. The beneficiary uh, of this intervention would be the corporation. Yes, that's in short what we are planning and what we are thinking of. I'm, I hope I can get some feedback from you. Thank you.